Um, yes. Uh, well, let me. Uh, dear, my talk is straight after John and talk about Research Council um, UK. So I'm from one of the seven Research Councils um, UK. Um, this is the pointer. Yeah, it's called Science and Technology Facilities Council, one of the seven research councils of the UK. So we, we are the one, facility is the key here, so we are the one operating, providing services around um, large instrumentation, such as large uh, high power lasers, neutron, synchrotron, uh, well, synchrotron, not exactly, let's not get into the territory, but uh, <laughs> there are, there are uh, significant uh, well, things that uh, it's beyond me, basically. Well, however, all these big facilities, all these big facilities are physically all located in one place, one physical place, very big site, called Rutherford Appleton laboratory. This is where I'm coming from. I'm employed by Science and Technology Facility Council, STFC. Right, so, um, so this is what it looks like. I'll explain a bit more later. Now, this talk, uh, the title of this talk is very important, actually uh, quite, quite nicely uh, connected with John's talk, is that if you look at this title, it's about data management. Now, what do we mean by data? Now, as the um, uh, if you talk about, if you look at the, the whole pipeline of uh, data generation process or life cycle, we are sort of the upstream generating the data, right? And, and other things, information relating to data. Now what we are, so as the upstream generator of the data or help people generate large amount of data, we actually not only interested in the sort of uh, experimental data, but also interested in the data generated down the stream, down the pipeline, data processing, and perhaps all the way stretch to the uh, computational aspect, computational data. So there there are a whole range of data actually encapsulated by this potential sort of data under this one word. Now, also diverse range of data. Now, this perhaps so partly, I want to partly explain the reason or, or, or um, the, the current situation is that there are a whole range of data available, a whole diverse range of data available at the Rutherford Appleton Laboratory. Because, uh, so first of all, it's sort of operating lasers, neutrons, synchrotron, as well as other, uh, even data centers, we host a, a locate data center for other um, uh, facility, uh, other councils in the UK, Natural Environmental Center, uh, Research Council in the UK. So we have a large range and range of data, astronomy data, particle physicist data, that's actually co-located in one place. So we have a huge range of data. But this talk, particularly for this audience, I'm going to focus on the data that directly relates to neutron and synchrotron. Um, myself is from the scientific computing department. Um, the way we organize, and I've got two hats in the department, uh, in, in the laboratory. One is I, I've got, I'm, I'm familiar with the data services division under this department. I'm also the National Lab Services Liaison Officer. National Lab, well, the way they organize this as TFC is that they've got a very sort of directory, National Laboratory, uh, National Lab Laboratory, so that kind of uh, umbrella, which has ICES, laser, and scientific computing, and technology, etc., etc. So we are under the sort of the same uh, directory structure. Now, this is actually the, the site, the physical look of the site. Uh, it's a bit dated. Uh, because our department is actually not there. <laughs> uh, but it uh, doesn't matter. So um, we, we, this is where we sit now. It's a very sort of modern uh, sort of building, et cetera, et cetera. There are, this is a BADC, Ralph Space, Space Science. This is particle science, uh, particle science here, department, running the tier one and, and uh, related to do a lot of experiments for CERN and, and collaborating with scientists elsewhere as well, particle physics community here. Um, now this one, Diamond Dalai Source, ISIS, TS1, Target Station 1, here, about here, Target Station 2, here. And this is essential laser facilities. Now, one very unique sort of thing about RAO is that it's perhaps one of the really unique sites in the world that have all these different facilities in one single place. And this is perhaps the reason that, um, there are many reasons. One of the important reasons is that um, we, 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 we are in a position, we have the sort of physical so location allowing all this happening, not just physically in one place, but also we, are, we have the opportunity as well as the, the, shall we say, the interaction allowing, very convenient interactions, people interactions that allow us to build, uh, it doesn't happen automatically or very quick. Uh, in the last 10 years also we build a common infrastructure serving all these different communities. Here I highlight Diamond Light Source, 30-ish uh, 
beam lines, uh, uh, TS1, TS2, uh, ISIS, 40 plus ish. So uh, we, some of them, well, clearly not often uh, in full operation. Some are phase three being planned and constructed, and similarly here. So uh, not, let's not get into the detail here. But all of them are actually sharing. Over time, we, we have built up this infrastructure, as I said, in the last 10 years ish. Now, but once upon a time in the long past, everybody is familiar with this, right? All these things, even today. We, we are still seeing portable devices using, well, today's portable devices is a lot more, uh, lot more powerful than those ones, right? Four PDs and all that. Those are talking about uh, however megabytes and all that. These were talking about terabytes of data, the capacity, hard drive. People do, do tomography, imaging sort of research. They do need to bring this and take their data away, for example. Now, all these things, emails, uh, disks, and, and simple web page dissemination, even up to a few years ago, a uh, few sort of five, six years ago, it still actually works very well, serving the community quite well. So this is all we need. And, and of course, there are lots of issues with those, those devices over time because uh, even today, even this year, there are still people coming back to us to ask for um, sort of data they have. They have the data, but they couldn't because they're st stuck in those devices. They don't have the means to get access to the data. So there are lots of issues about... Uh, Individual users uh, or research maintaining, managing their data over time. That this over time, this time issue is a key point here. They don't have the means as well as the expertise over time to look after their data. This is just really very recent uh, sort of emails that are coming back to us. As I said, this works very well. People uh, seem quite happy for, for, for a long time. ISIS has been on operation for since the 70s. Well, various stages, of course. Um, very well. However, Going back a little bit, the, the structure of this talk is, uh, there are three parts of this talk. The first part, this is the first part. I'm going to give you an overview, the data in structure, the context, the setting. The second part is the core, the, the data catalog, and as well as other metadata, sort of more interest to, to this group. And then the last one is, will be sort of how people access their data, and as well as open access issue, data access issues. Now this one, looking into the data infrastructure. Now, we can argue what has been, sort of what other things happened in the last 10 years that has been sort of make an influence or impact in where, into sort of where we are today. Now, there are lots of things. For example, there are significant investments in early sort of 2003-ish time. There are a lot of by the UK e-science program in terms of the infrastructure investment, storage, and if you remember, some of you may remember SRB and those, those kind of things. Uh, and also the push from the data intensive science and, and discovery. And all these things, coupled with the actually on-site developments with the facility Diamond and ISIS, they have been, one thing people, perhaps outside of the, the, this community, is that people may not be really aware of the continuous development, upgrades of the facilities. What that means is on the ground to the computing facilities and, uh, like, like us, department like us, is that we're not just seeing the rapid increase in particular in recent years, the data rate, the data volume is sort of increased dramatically, but also the diversity of data as well as the complexity of data. Now, co complexity of the data is one thing that perhaps um, most, most sort of influencing what we are happening t here, apart from, uh, on top of the, the uh, volumes and the rate. Now here, this is where we are now. This is, now, you can, argue the, uh, you can argue which bits is actually happening in, in which facilities, whether they have all of them. We can get into detailed discussion of that or understanding of that. But roughly speaking, all is started with the, the, the data monitoring or data acquisition system and control and all that in the facilities. This is just a target station one, all the facilities here. This is just a monitoring of all the load of the data acquisition system, see how heavy load they are, etc. And there are data replication synchronization system across copies within the facility to make the data immediately available to the scientists who conduct experiment at the time. So people can access via the networks and all that. And network monitoring system from, from, from ISIS all the way to the data archive, to the data storage uh, uh, elsewhere in, on the lab, on the physical side to our department elsewhere. And, and there are, of course, the most important to this audience in the sense that there are data cataloging happening. And people, um, the important things about data cataloging and, and data storage is that if you take that time factor into 
consideration. This is making things a lot more complicated, and this is where the majority of the cost and the development cost and maintaining cost and the, the, the complexity comes in here is really when you keep the data for a longer time, things comes, can be, get costly as well as complicated. Well, of course, there are, on the back, there are tape or robotic tape system continuously operating, serving all these different uh, facilities, uh, Diamond, ISIS, CLF, as well as uh, other, other, other data storage. This is where we are now. Now, we're talking about data management. Uh, there are infrastructure behind the scene. Well, now I'm getting into the tools we are, we are sort of working on today, uh, working on or have been using today. Now, the key thing here is, uh, like, like Simon, Simon Coast's uh, presentation, is that the understanding of this whole pipeline uh, is from the proposal to, 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 registration, to, to scheduling registration, to sample capture, safety, environmental inf environment information, and all that information capturing. So, well, all these things happen well before people co ever come to, the exper to do the experiment physically on site for three, four days. So those, all those things being fed, being captured by various systems, user office system, business system, safety sample system, et cetera, et cetera. Or all this information over time being captured and pushed into this central, central uh, metadata catalog system, right? It's called ICAT. Um, like it's back, on the back, it's, the, uh, it's a core schema I will talk about uh, later. Now, the key thing about... Yes. The key thing about this is the facility, as the facility operator, our focus is really making, our utmost focus is really making sure experiment takes place and takes place in an efficient manner and people can conduct their science in a, in a productive way. Now, there are, however, as that these are important steps between, uh, between experiment and publication. And these are the, clearly depends on the beamline, depends on the facility, depends on the type of uh, research or science you do, it takes various time. But sometimes it can take up to, we're talking about a year, a year or two, take from going through here to here. So this is really the, so, so we, in recent years, we sort of spent trying to expand our range of coverage in, uh, in terms of the support of what we capture, what we, ca what we capture into this IK database to support this downstream pipeline processing, reduction as well as analysis in the recent, uh, in the recent time more to do with more even to the computation aspect. Now, but however, the reality is the real world is very it's messy. The data is messy and the complex. Uh, the workflow is very complex. This is some early work we do. As John mentioned, basically it's not just about the not data wise it has raw data derived data resultant data that ends up in paper now people may be interested in um, this data because they find the paper and then but they want to trace back but it, uh, but however, to capture all this provenance, it's really a challenge. For, from a facility provider perspective, things are happening outside the lab. People traditionally, they take data away, do analysis, they end up with paper. If they are nice or they come back to do uh, another, so apply another beam time, they will need to tell you the publication, then you, are, you know what has come out from the other end. But in reality, that's that's not, has, traditional has not been the case. So it's quite difficult to capture that. But even, we, we have some early projects trying to, well actually funded by Simon's Managing Research Program, data program, is that various, sort of trying to capture those things. But even that, this is only captured a fraction of this. It can be very complicated. And reality, there are a whole range of issues by capturing this provenance, such as the data, which bits of the data, research is a trial and error, particular this kind of experimental data, and that's a, lots of data you generate is actually not relevant or not very useful, or at the time you think it's not relevant, not very useful, but later state of the parameters or whatever you use turn out to be useful. So this is a really a trade-off between what you capture and what you don't. And, and also there are software versions and, and all sorts of things. People are now more and more, a people element I think is very important. People are now uh, more and more doing their analysis. Different parts of the analysis are done by different people. They may be in different places. So collaborative data analysis become more and more common, in, in, even in small teams, as we see it. See it. Now, another thing is about this, this particular one is about, is more sort of, uh, well, uh, it's about leading academic in the UK just talking about their pipeline processing from the gather the data and doing the analysis at Diamond. This is uh, about tomography imaging processing using I-12 and 13 at Diamond. It's from this part is primarily at Diamond, talking about, it's so small, uh, but the pipeline is that from this part is doing experiment and do the initial reconstruction, uh, 3D image reconstruction at Diamond using Diamond's facility. But however, down the pipeline, there are a whole range of other things happening. Because 
this tomography imaging, imaging in particular, is generates so much data, and the data pipeline is quite complex. Well, you can argue this is a more advanced in processing pipeline by the advanced academic. So, but however, it's very difficult for even for the leading academics to, to go through this pipeline, not to mention the expertise and or knowledge required to go through this pipeline. So it's actually lots of things happening is actually is making is making already making difference in terms of how we manage our data. This one is a, a, it's a, it's a very early pilot stage study and trying to understand what's involved in, in this kind of large scale sort of data uh, analysis pipeline. Uh, this one is particular to do with imaging, but there are other things doing, uh, there are other things happening and other conversation we are happening, uh, we, are, we are happening with different sort of audience and different communities that are talking about different aspects of processing after post experiment processing. So what the, the central thing is that in order to drive this data sort of, uh, we call it computational data management infrastructure underpinning the, the to help to re accelerate the research after the experiment, you do need a lot of infrastructure support. What that means is actually not just for starting point is the data availability from the data catalog, what kind of the metadata you, have, you can obtain and get uh, from the IK database, as well as other whole range of other services from the sort of fast access, integrated access, fast access to your data from your cluster and to, to different types of cluster connected, directly connected to your data, and, and as well as the visualization capability that allows you to, to really disseminate or understand better of your data. So the large complexity of issues involve infrastructure, software, and people are involved in this whole process. Now this is sort of um, raised the issue so uh, we generate a lot of data. If we still sort of thinking about the, the traditional model of moving data around and to, to use the data, would that be a, still be the right way or suitable way for this type of science? sort of question, there's a lot of question marks here, what sorts of things we are, we are sort of thinking and this is why sort of this little big pilot study is trying to, uh, going on to trying to understand all these sort of things um, involved in that. Now we also, as, an, as I said, there are reduction, data reduction, normalization and analysis happening um, in the lab. This one particular one is with ISIS. As you, uh, the next talk is about HDF and Nexus and SIF. Now, uh, most of the data facilities, in particular ISIS Diamond, are already, well, I think Diamond is perhaps more advanced because let, uh, ISIS got legacy sort of instruments. But gradually, they are all moving to Nexus, really. Um, but there are, co these two metadata format is sort of the, the most dominant, predominant one. So, however, from moving from the data they get from the facilities upwards to actual the data insights they want to get from the, their, uh, their actual data, there are a lot of steps they're actually going to through. If you, I don't, I, I, I take the sort of assumption that most of you here has, has directly manipulated all this file directly yourself. If you've ever done that, you will find this is actually quite a tedious process. Um, there are a lot of reasons why it, it can be done better, basically. This is exactly demonstrating that, why, how and what can be done, make it better. So to help scientists basically move straight from this kind of format without drawing into them and then go straight into this, basically providing all these sort of different computing technologies in the middle to allow all these things happening. We're making a lot sort of uh, making, for example, we're making this HDF data as well as Nexus data available straight to view, to plot and, and interact with all these data, why this different structure format, allowing them to interact with them as well as uh, allowing them to directly take away for, because users come in uh, different shapes and sizes. Some are novice users, some are very experienced users. So there are, there are different, different type of users. So some of them really want to take this Excel, for example, straight away to, to, to the bits they need and then go away to do the analysis and continue to do the simulation or whatever. So we are trying to cater this whole range of uh, user and user capabilities, trying to provide all these different tools to allow them to do this. Do, do these kind of things a lot more effectively than what they are currently doing. Now, data catalog and tools. Um, as a facility, we work a lot with the European facilities, uh, and the uh, list of the facilities. Uh, we have a big project called Pen Data ODI, um, Poton Source, sort of, you, you can see here, the long title here. So basically, it's a collaboration uh, between us, uh, Diamond ISIS, as well as all the other synchrotron neutron facilities around Europe. Um, the key thing about this project is that we are building a federated data catalog 
across the facilities. So that it look into the policy aspect, uh, look into the file format aspects, of, for example, standardization of Nexus format across these facilities. We're also looking at other, many other things, data provenance and tracking of the data uh, issues, t tracking of data across facilities, and especially for people who use multiple facilities to do their experiment, which is we already got uh, evidence by analyzing the user office record, anonymized, anonymized <laughs> user office records to uh, uh, understand how many users, about 11%-ish people in, in the, in the all, covered by all these communities, all these facilities are using more than one facilities. So there are concrete evidence on the table saying that there are definitely lots of users, uh, more and more users using more, more than one facility, more than one experimental technique in their research. Key things I want to emphasize here, uh, ICAD. Uh, ICAD is the, the, the ICAD database, in essence, it's the core of it is a database, it's a lar very large database, it's got lots of tables. These are the core entities in that table. Uh, the most important things about this is that two things I want to highlight. One is it's more and more being extended to cover not just experimental data, but also extended to the downstream so a common day, extending not just the database schema or structure to a common day that, but as well as we integrating this, this ICAD as well as services tools around ICAD to um, interact with the HPC processing and data processing, etc., in the facilities. So, and also another important aspect is it's a, it is a database. It's about cataloging, but it's also about continuous access to the data. Because one thing is very important um, is the investigator. Um, I, I do want to highlight this. Oh, by the way, this ICA is an open source project and several facilities are contributing to this, this um, development. Uh, if you, one, one thing very important in this, um, in, in, in this long -term, longer term access to data is that you have to keep the user information in, in here. To, to allow this, this is a Nexus, this is a Nexus profile, application profile, if some of you um, have in the, sort of into that area. So this is basically in, in the uh, Pen Data ODI project, we've done sort of, uh, it's, this is a web package leading by uh, Daisy. They have three profiles, one for tomography, one for small angle scattering, one for powder diffraction. So they're following the Nexus uh, application profile to derive three sort of uh, Nexus format for Daisy. Um, Important thing, differentiator, if you look at the Nexus profile, application profile, and the difference is the user identities are trying to, they are trying to incorporate that into these Nexus files, which are very important. <laughs> there are a couple of suites of tools uh, sort of associated with the ICAT tools and ICAT, so cataloging tools. There are lots of things here. You can get into the detail. Uh, yeah, here. So we have also done lots of uh, sort of work into standardizing the terminology, control vocabularies uh, across the facilities. This, uh, for example, in this particular one is trying to, um, in, in the project, is trying to understand, standardize the, the, the description, sort of on top control vocabulary for facilities, instruments, and technique, and the relationship between them. There are lots of applications for this. Um, final thing, about open data access. Now, process. This is from the left to right. Uh, it's basically the paper. The paper here, you've got an ODI. You can go to data site managed by British Library, and then you can get to the landing page of the experimental data, so pointing to that landing page, STFC, and then you can get to this uh, top cat, which is the interface to ICAT, the web portal, and then you need to log on. I will say a bit more about that, and then you will get to the actual data itself, and then you can click the download, etc., etc. This is the sort of the current ISIS way, I will put, um, the way of uh, managing their open access to their data. Now, one thing very important to say is open access, ISIS does do open access, but open access doesn't, is not equivalent to non-restricted access. That means you need to register, right? You need to register. That's why there's a login table, there's a login uh, dialogue there. And there are three years embargo period, there's a 10 years sort of commitment from the facilities. There are lots of implications. I'm sure you will have more questions later. Um, I'll look what we are looking at now. Uh, as I mentioned, so there are lots of things happening in the facility that will have significant implications, in our view, to the way we manage our data, to where, where we locate the data, really, and, because, and the connection with the computation, the processing, downstream processing. These are sort of some of the t sort of things along those lines. I wouldn't get into the details uh, of all these things here, but uh, there were definitely, and a whole range of people have sort of contributed directly or indirectly to my understanding of the topic, um, as well as the, 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 the subject itself has been in development at RAL for 
in the last 10 years. So some people have left, uh, more people coming. So, um, so this is, so thank you for this audience. Thank you. <laughs>